kind of this press conference in the history of this country. Uh, before, I would like to recognize some very important personality among us. First is His Excellency, Norwegian Ambassador to South Sudan. You are welcome. I also have Honorable Dr. Annie, the board chairman of the National Revenue Authority, with me here. Uh, Honorable Commissioner General of Dubek uh, Investment Authority is also present with us here. With me is the Regional Director of African Development Bank, the people who are providing funding to the establishment of the Revenue Authority is uh, on my right side uh, here. We also have the Country Director of African Development Bank, the Country Director, I mean African Development Country Director for Republic of South Sudan is also among us here. On my left is uh, Acting Commissioner of Domestic Tax Revenue, is also here. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are welcome to uh, this very important function. What we want to do here is just to brief the general public and people of South Sudan about the activity of the National Revenue Authority for the past 11 months. Uh, as you are all aware, National Revenue Authority was inaugurated on 1st of March 2018 in accordance with National Revenue Authority Act 2016. The mandate of the National Revenue Authority is basically to take over the nine oil revenue generation of this country as a single task collector. And when I mean the nine oil revenue generation, there are some institutions we used to collect this nine oil revenue generation for the Republic of South Sudan. Notable among them were the former directories of uh, customs and then taxation. And then apart from that, we have other ministries and departments, like Ministry of uh, Petroleum, Telecommunication Authority, uh, Ministry of Public Service, Ministry of uh, Trade, Immigration and Passport. They have been collecting certain fees and money on behalf of the government. But by coming into force of the National Revenue Authority at 2016, National Revenue Authority is only mandated institution to collect this revenue. In actual fact, what the National Revenue Authority is doing is that we have taken over the revenue collection responsibility of all these ministries and departments. So it is a responsibility of the National Revenue Authority to collect this revenue. But the former two directories have been absorbed by the National Revenue Authority. So now there are divisions of the National Revenue Authority. So now we have a custom division of the National Revenue Authority, and then we have domestic tax revenue division of the National Revenue Authority. So we have two acting commissioners heading both uh, divisions who report directly to the Commissioner General. So basically this is what uh, we have been doing. And the aim of His Excellency the President, General Savaki Maedi, is to make sure that the country have a sustainable income base to diversify the revenue base from over concentration on oil revenue to a non-oil revenue. And this is basically the vision of the president. And all that we are doing is to what? We are behind the success of the president to make sure we put this country forward into a next level. And one of the significant things we are doing so far is to make sure we consolidate the current revenue sources into one pool. And it's part of our legal mandate to make sure that all the revenue which are scattered all along, we consolidate them into a warm pool. So one of the major activities that we have started to embark on this reform is to make sure we streamline the revenue collection system, especially in terms of the banking system of the revenue. So the key issue there is that we managed successfully to rev uh, review the banking uh, collection system. Before the establishment of the National Revenue Authority, Ministry of Finance was responsible for collecting this revenue. And the Ministry of Finance also had some uh, agreement with some commercial bank to receive the revenue on uh, behalf of the government. But after the establishment of the Revenue Authority, we have taken over that responsibility. We want ahead to select new banks, which are very competitive and approved before the board. So currently, we are dealing with this new bank. And one of the critical issues here is that we have only one single account and the block account in the name of the National Revenue Authority. And in this account, all the revenue sources that I've just mentioned are being paid into this account. So revenue from customs, revenue from domestic tax, and revenue from all these ministry and department, effective 1st January 2019, 
all these resources started being channeled to this account. Of course, we have started in earnest, but we cannot say it is perfect because this is the first time it is a new thing. There were a few challenges, but we are managing those challenges to make sure that we improve upon the revenue auto, uh, generation and we make sure that all the revenue are channeled into this uh, uh, single account. But some of the issues that I also want to address before uh, I give you some of the figures that we are all itching to hear is that we are having some challenges, we know, and uh, we taxpayers generally are having challenges in this country as a result of uh, issues of jurisdiction. If you look critically what we do in this country, the state and the county also have their own jurisdiction about certain revenue sources. But there are certain shared jurisdiction that we have, which is creating confusion between the state and then the, the, the uh, central government. So what the National Revenue Authority is doing is to make sure that we redraft the entire taxation out of 2009 to make sure that we clarify issues concerning PIT in particular. So as I speak to you now, we have a task consultant which is on the ground working with the Ministry of Finance and our task lawyers to make sure that we draft a new taxation act for this country. And this is one of the major issues that we need to address. Because to have a very effective tax administrative system, you need a law which is very flexible, which can promote a business-friendly environment. And these are some of the things we are doing to address issues relating to personal income tax, which is affecting most of the NGO and uh, other organizations. We are also looking at issues of exemption, which is a very critical issue for this country. One of the critical things we are looking at, how do we streamline the exemption procedures to make it more friendly and to be more quicker to grant? By, authority, uh, by National Revenue Authority Act, exemption has been transferred to the National Revenue Authority. Currently, what we are doing, the Ministry of Finance is acting on behalf of the National Revenue Authority to grant exemption because we don't have the staff, the core staff in place to work on the exemption for the Commissioner General to, uh, to sign. In the next couple of weeks, we are going to transfer the exemption from the Ministry of Finance to the National Revenue Authority, where we'll make sure that we streamline the exemption system, make sure that those who deserve the exemption are granted the exemption. I must say that we are losing a lot of money from exemption. At times in a month, the total exemption that we grant is over two billion. That is from the border, where we have a collection of four, about 400 million. So you can see the statistics. We are granting over two billion exemption, and the total fiscal collection we are collecting is 400 million. Something needs to be done. We are not saying that we are going to cancel exemption for the international organizations on the NGO. We want to streamline to make sure that whatever loopholes in the system of granting the exemption, we block those uh, uh, loopholes. It's a very critical thing that we, we are going to do as a National Revenue Authority. So generally, National Revenue Authority is operating very effectively. In January, we launched a single account. We call it single account, or it's basically a block account of the National Revenue Authority. And the performance for that account for January was relatively good. What we want to demonstrate here it's not necessarily about how much we have, generated, we have generated through the single account, but it's about the fact that for the first time in the history of this country, the political leadership have decided that they want transparent and accountable system of revenue collection. Therefore, they supported the establishment of National Revenue Authority and this block account for the Revenue Authority. So for the first time, the collection function has been separated from tax policy function. So the Ministry of Finance now is responsible for tax policy function, and the National Revenue Authority is solely responsible for what? The collection function. So we have an account in the name of the National Revenue Authority. We receive money in this account for four weeks, and by law, we transfer this money on or 15th, before 15th of the ensuing to the Ministry of Finance or to the Central Bank for the government to disperse. So in January, when we launch the single account, these are the few statistics we want to share with you that everybody should take note of. The general total collection for the single account, in terms of SSP, we have collected 1.2 billion, 1.28 billion pounds in January. As of 31st January, 
the collection figures for the block account for the National Revenue Authority was 1.2 billion pounds. This is not to say that a lot, of, a lot of money did not go outside this account. We have identified a huge resources which did not pass through this account because it was the first time we have started operationalizing the account and these are the few challenges. And we are also making sure that we, ident we identify these loopholes and we block them. And we believe strongly that these free body figures are going to improve. And also, if you look at the hard currency, we, we, we also have $4,600,000. That's what we have collected as hard currency, the dollars for, uh, through the single account. And all these resources I'm talking about has been transferred to the central bank for the Ministry of Finance to use. What is significant here is that we have evidence-based data now we can count on. And that is one of the significant things that we are introducing to the new regime. That if you ask for figures, we will be able to produce evidence-based data for you. And this is also good for government for projection and planning. And for you, the citizen, you cannot know how much we are generating for government each in any particular period of time. So if you are demanding accountability, you should know how much we are demanding. So if government is also asking you to pay, you should also know that what we are generating is not enough. That is why government is asking you to pay more. So accountability also goes with what? Obligations. So when you are going to demand accountability for government, you also have obligation to honor your task responsibility. Apart from this, the Revenue Authority is not only consolidating the, the resources, we are also expanding the task name. Also, for the first time, the UN agency, all the UN agencies, about 18 of them in this country, they are non fee stamp staff who start remitting their personal income tax from this month. It's a very also significant achievement for the National Revenue Authority. We had a successful discussion with them, and everybody understood that they have a responsibility to support the government. They have not been paying over the years, but they have a responsibility to pay. So successfully, we brought them into the task net. Effective this month, we will be generating significant amount from thousands of uh, national staff from the UN agency. It is all also in the national staff, other international consultants who also come here for a short period to make some few monies here are also are under obligation to pay that. So Revenue Authority basically has started operationalizing fully. We are also working on our database to make sure we have a centralized database where we can have real-time reporting. And we are collaborating with the banks, the, eight, the nine banks that we are working with right now who are collaborating with us to collect the, the revenue for us. One of the significant things about the change in rules of the game with the bank is that we are no longer paying the bank any percentage from our collection. <coughs> Previously, they have been receiving some percentage. But we have agreed with them that you cannot collect taxpayers' money and give it out. They are banks, they are in business. They should be able to use our money within six weeks to make some money. So we are not paying them any percentage. They are, we are, they are just charging at the normal bank charges that everybody receives. And that is also a significant achievement for the government. So the money which would have gone to this bank in the name of giving them percentage now is now returned with the government. And the banks are really supporting us. We want to congratulate the bank for the first month, what they have done so far. And then we want to see this uh, support to continue. It is our hope that all of you will support the National Revenue Authority to become fully operational by the end of next year. At the end of the day, what we are doing here is support the people of South Sudan so that when we establish this authority for you, we will work out and hand it over to you. And I must say that this is not the first time you have foreigner, some foreigners sitting on the floor here or managing the revenue sources. It happened in other African countries. But what we are also doing for you is to support you. It is your responsibility to make sure that you support it so that we build a system and leave it for you. In some two years to come, Commissioner General will not be here. This place will be managed by South Sudanese. And this is what we did for other countries. But we must make sure that you learn so that when we go, you can manage this system and also be comparable to other countries like how it happened in Uganda, Tanzania, and other places. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you very much for your, your presence. Uh, we used to continue with this collaboration. 
Uh, at the end of this, I would like to invite the press to ask uh, questions, and then we will provide uh, uh, some answers. And then we, we can continue. Now, under each government and then the, the local government, they are government on their own. The, the constitution has reserved certain revenue for them to collect, and they, are, they, they don't remit it to the central government. So they're also supposed to collect that revenue. One of the challenges we are having is the personal income tax. In the constitution, we have state personal income tax and national personal income tax. But as we speak now, we don't have regulations and law to define what constitutes state personal income tax. It has been a very challenging issue. And this is what we are doing to resolve the issue. We are rewriting the taxation act. And 25th and 26th of this month, we have a national conference where the state government representatives are coming for us to address this issue. We want to put it in an act signed by the the president once and for all, and we want to state categorically in that law what constitutes state personal income tax and who are the category of employees of this NGO that the state are supposed to collect taxes from. So it's a challenge we are addressing for now. And then the issue of account. The state is supposed to have their own account. Whatever you're supposed to pay to the state must be paid to the state account, not in the National Revenue Authority account. We don't have that agreement for us to collect and remit to them. We don't have that. But for now, the state also have the account, and they have several revenue sources that they, they, they generate. So those money is supposed to go into the, uh, the, the state account. So the issue of uh, what we are counting, what we are doing now, we are still receiving budget from the Ministry of Finance. Yes, National Revenue Authority will be returning 2% of uh, the total collection for establishment and training for the next four years. So, but our operation cost is coming from the Ministry of Finance. Our budget will be coming from the Ministry of Finance in general. Uh, of course, in future, we'll be autonomous to have our own resources to pay our staff. But for now, we still rely on the Ministry of Finance for our budget. So basically, uh, the issue of the state and then the, the operation cost, this is what we are doing. So the year, what is happening is that we have a challenge with the state government on the issue of the PIT. So whatever is happening is because uh, that we don't have a law to regulate it. So we are working to make sure that we have a law to, to regulate. So we have been talking to the state to make sure uh, the matter is handled amicably. Whenever you are paying to the national government, they shouldn't worry you. But this is a gentleman argument we are reaching with them. But the challenge is that we need a law to regulate uh, the personal income tax. Collecting money into the old account. I've already told you, these are the challenges that uh, we faced uh, last month, but I think uh, we have resolved some of these issues. But it is normal when you introduce a new system, uh, these are few challenges. But we, we, have, redu we have resolved it. The, the money is now being paid into the new account. The system, it is true, we are working on uh, the system. Very soon, we will have a, a centralized system over there which will take up of the challenges that we are facing. We recognize the challenges that we have with the system now in the taxation uh, division. We, we know the challenges already. That is why we are building a new database to have a new system to make sure that uh, the challenges we are facing will no longer be there. The, the reconciliation even with the bank is a challenge. Reconciliation with your, your, the payment is a challenge. We, we recognize that. So you don't worry. We hope that in the next four uh, months to come, we will have, have our system operationalized, and some of these uh, uh, challenges uh, will be addressed. PIT, international staff PIT, is supposed to be remitted to our revenue account, the block account. Whether they are deployed, whatever they are deployed, since you have the employer here, you are in charge of the PIT, you have to remit it to the, the, the block account. The exemption, exemption, we are not going to cancel any exemption. International NGO and UN organization, they already have treaties and the taxation act has already given them some exemption. What we are saying to streamline the exemption is not about canceling it. It's about making sure that we regulate the way the exemption is being granted. Currently, what we notice is that there are people who are not businessmen and women. Yes, they have exemption. Then they are selling the exemption to businessmen. So somebody sits in his house, an exemption is granted to the person, and the person now sells this exemption to a businessman or woman, bringing goods. This is what we want to avoid. The exemption is not meant for private individual or private company. 
The exemption is meant for humanitarian organizations and other organizations who are here to support the government. So we want to streamline the exemption regime, and that is what we are saying, and that is what we are going to do. On the issue of uh, weather consultation, that is exactly what we are going to do. So the, the, the stakeholders consultation that we are having on the 25th and the 26th, we are going to invite all of you to be there. We want to make sure that we have a very robust taxation act for this country, which can be comparable to any taxation act in the sub-region. We would like to take uh, uh, additional three questions. Then I will give opportunity to African Development Bank uh, uh, Regional Director to, to make some few comments. Establishment in Kenya. Now, when we say a permanent establishment, it's not about building. We are talking about the owners of the company, the shareholding, and where the company is registered. In tax law, that is what we call permanent establishment. So I always use this example, uh, uh, 540. 540 is a registered Kenya company, airline. Now, 540 operate between Nairobi and Juba, but they have a ticket office here where they have Kenyans, which they employ in Nairobi, but they deploy them here to work. The salary they are receiving is the salary the company pays them in Nairobi. But a component of that salary is being received in Juba. Now, Section 53 of the Taxation Act 2009, as amended in 2016, stated that we are practicing source income regime. So what it means is that every income which is generated within the boundary of South Sudan is taxable, unless it is exempted from tax. So that particular staff, who is deployed by uh, 540, to work in the ticket office, if the total salary is maybe $2,000, and then out of that $2,000, because it's in a mission in Juba, he's receiving $500, we are going to tax that $500 in South Sudan. Meanwhile, the government of uh, Kenya will tax the total $2,000 in Kenya. That is what we call double taxation. Or a company like, uh, again, the 540, the revenue that they generate as a result of selling tickets, that portion of the revenue which is generated here is taxable in South Sudan. And then the entire revenue, including what is generated in uh, Juba, Uganda, and Nairobi, will also be taxed by the authority in what? Uh, Nairobi. That is what we call ta double taxation. And the only reason why we will not tax that income which is generated here is if the country has a double taxation agreement with the Republic of South Sudan. And as I speak to you now, it is only Morocco which have a double taxation agreement with the Republic of South Sudan. So any other international staff, wherever you are coming from, if the income you are generating here, if it is not exempted from tax, you must pay tax on it. That, that is the issue about the double taxation. So that one, there is no discussion because what you do is that you pay the tax on the component of what you are earning here. We give you a tax credit. You send it to your country to file it with the tax authority and they give you a tax rebate or whatever. That is between you and your country. But from here, we will make sure we collect the tax from you. Uh, the, the issue of data is a very challenging getting data in this country. So what is what we are working very hard to make sure we have this transparency. So if you talk about data, I am providing evidence-based data and the January is our baseline. It's a base year. I cannot talk about any data in, before, but I'll be talking about data from January. So, nurse may, if you ask me about data, I can make comparison about what we know from revenue authority perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. What is happening now? You will continue to pay what you have been paying to the state. Don't stop. The new, the current arrangement we have is that the local recruiter staff at the state level. You, you did that the task and you pay to the state. Please continue like that. We don't want any confusion. Until we finish the consultation, we agree on whatever framework we are going to have, then we'll come in, the whole public will know what to do. But now let's maintain the status quo in the issue of what you pay to the state and then uh, what you pay to the national uh, government. Any other interesting questions? Fishing South Sudan <laughs> is to collect revenue. It is not our mandate to determine how the money is spent. So that is our mandate. 
We collect in a transparent manner and we account for it in a transparent manner. That is why we are mentioning figures we have collected in January. And these figures have been transferred. Now it is a responsibility of Ministry of Finance to be telling people how these monies are being used. <laughs> On the issue of performance of the bank, I must say that the first month performance is far better than what they used to do previous years. And we have to congratulate them for that. And I know they are going to improve on it. The reporting, the weekly reporting is very accurate, is on time, and there is some kind of competition now among the banks. Because the contract they signed with us, there are strict rules of uh, termination of contract. If you violate the contract, I will hold a press conference like this and terminate it, so that the public will know the kind of banking practices you are engaging in in the country. So the bank for now, they are very strict. They are doing things very right. And I don't think any bank would like the Commissioner General to hold a press conference and terminate the contract and for you to lose customers. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and then of the press. Now, it is very important. You, you don't bite the figure which feed you. And there is a saying that you don't insult the long mouth of the crocodile if you are in the river. <laughs> so le le let me give opportunity to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me give opportunity to the regional director of African Development Bank. Uh, they are the one funding the entire uh, revenue authority establishment for the next three years. Mr. Nagetu, you are welcome. Oil revenues to non-oil revenues. It's important that functions such as these become institutionalized. And, and my, my key message here is, particularly for the media, is don't focus on the numbers. These are just baby numbers. In subsequent months, you will see this increasing. What is important is the train has left the station. Revenue generation, domestic revenue in South Sudan is now becoming institutionalized in the national uh, Revenue Authority, I think, is is embodiment of that. We are very pleased, indeed very pleased with the progress. It has not been an easy journey. It's been a very difficult journey, but we are very pleased with the work that's being done. We are pleased with the amounts collected, but we are even pleased more about the prospect of future activities that we see uh, going forward. Now, we need not fool ourselves into thinking this is an easy exercise because uh, setting up this institution means several interests will be affected, uh, the old ways of doing things will change, transparency means shining light on the way you do business, so there will be several uh, vested interests who will, who will, who will not be happy loopholes will be closed, exemptions will be looked at. Uh, I, I, I can tell you, in one of the countries neighboring South Sudan, a few years ago, they, 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 the book of exemptions were 380 pages long. All manners of exemptions. So it's not unique to South Sudan. Today it's down to about 60 pages. So if you've got exemptions, look for Commissioner General to be coming after you. Uh, perhaps not today or tomorrow, but uh, eventually. So there is winners and losers, but overall I think the government and the people of South Sudan are better off because of this uh, activity. Now, they do a lot of the heavy lifting, collecting the revenue and going after uh, tax dodgers and so on, but this is everybody's role. It's not only the Commissioner General's role. The government of South Sudan has the responsibility to enact the appropriate legislation and to enforce it. Citizens of South Sudan, as one colleague asked, have a responsibility not only to pay, of course you have a responsibility to pay, but to hold their government accountable, normally through the parliament and other representative bodies. You members of the media, you have a, a major role to play, not only to cover how much has been collected, 
but to ask the difficult questions. Where is this money going? Uh, and then the international community, ADB and all the other partners around the room, we have a role to play to give this institution a voice. It is an institution, I'm sure, that gets attacked from the left and the right and center. We have a, a role to give them the voice they need and the support they need to make sure that they are able to do their work. We have initially put in about a little over $17 million into this project. Compared to the outcome, this is just a drop in the bucket. And we are ready to support the work of the uh, commission going forward. And I want to encourage other partners, whether providing voice or providing resources to join us, to work together uh, to strengthen this institution. This is very much a work in progress. It's the first announcement. And many loopholes, many inconsistencies, state, local, national, a lot of details to be worked out. And we need to be patient. But what's important is the train has left and the direction of travel is in the right direction. So let me again thank the Commissioner General, the uh, board that uh, has supported him, and uh, once again pledge our unqualified support to this and congratulate the people and government of South Sudan. Thank you very much.